Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Jeff, the IT guy. Hope everyone out there is doing okay. Hope you're staying safe, practicing social distancing, and I hope that you're also learning uh, during this time while you're probably working from home and can't go out and hang out with everyone or, or do anything. So this video today, we're gonna look at the Apple iPad, and we're gonna see if we can do some programming on this. Um, <clears throat> and the, what brought this up was uh, several years ago, I was working as a contractor doing software development and I actually forgot my laptop at the house and all I had on me was my iPad um, and a keyboard. And so I was able to do a little bit of development on it then. And I wanted to go ahead and look at it uh, again in 2020 and see just what I could do uh, with the iPad using um, <clears throat> the pen and the keyboard. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about uh, the things that you can do, the, the apps that I've used, where the, the shortfalls are, or the downcomings, um, and where it kind of excels, if it does excel. And I'm going to go ahead and start by saying that this is the iPad uh, Generation 6. Um, it's not the latest generation iPad. It's not the 10.2 or 10.5 inch. It's actually the, the 9.7 uh, inch. Uh, it's also, you know, not a Pro. It's not an Air or anything like that. So I didn't want to make it too easy. Uh, I looked at getting a, a Pro, an 11 inch Pro, one of the new ones. I've looked at the, the first generation 11 inch Pros uh, that came out in 2018. I've also looked at the iPad Airs. This is what I had. This is what I used for, for school while I'm getting my masters. And so I just figured I would go ahead and give this thing a go and see, see how well it done. And even if it was viable, right? I wanted to see if it was viable. And so I actually use this every day uh, as sort of a companion um, to my work. And what I mean by that is it's very small, so like it's 9.8 inches. And what I use it for is I actually just use it for Slack, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> I keep it to the, to the left of, of my workstation. I keep Slack up on it um, as well as like a couple different apps. Uh, I'll switch between Slack and potentially email uh, or YouTube or something like that on the side. That way I don't have to impede what I'm doing on my main screen or my secondary screen. And so I've got this typically going just using Slack or a companion app like that. And so let's talk about the performance uh, and how it was to actually program on this. And so the first thing we're going to look at is an app called Terminus or Termius. And what this app does is it allows you to SSH into a web server, um, which, is, which is pretty cool. And so I actually ssh into the Raspberry Pi that I have set up here in my home that is a web server uh, for personal development. And so I was able to SSH into that just fine. Uh, it was very easy to do. Um, as you can see, it worked great. <clears throat> able to do you know, go in, do some file exploring. It worked just like it would if you had, you know, SSH'd in from a, uh, the terminal on an Apple computer or uh, used, you know, PuTTY or something like that um, or Bash on a Windows PC. And so it worked really well for, for SSHing in. Um, <clears throat> they do have apps where you can also share files and things like that um, to a server. And so I was relatively pleased on how how well it did for, for, um, for that, for you know, SSHing in and stuff. I, like I said, I was relatively surprised at how well it did. Uh, it was actually pretty cool, uh, to be honest. The next app that I used to actually do a little bit of development, um, and this was just playing around and stuff, and you'll see this as well, is an app called Textastic. And this app allows you to do um, some HTML, JavaScript, PHP, those sorts of things for web development. And I was able to just go in, it was, it was very smooth. Um, it was easy to create. Uh, however, I did miss having a mouse. And I know with iPad OS coming up, um, you're actually gonna get a pointer and stuff and you can use a mouse with it. Um, <clears throat> I did miss having a mouse for, for this. A lot of people don't code using mouses, I, I, I do still, I'm, uh, that's just me. But I do miss having a mouse. Um, 
But it wasn't that bad, you know, I was able to still use the touch screen and everything and go where I wanted to and actually be able to code a little bit of PHP. Um, there's nothing too serious behind it uh, in what I'm doing in Textastic. However, uh, it was really cool though to think that on uh, a $330, however much they are now for an iPad, for the, a base model iPad, that I could actually do productive work on it. Um, if I was a web developer, if that's all I did, it's really neat to think that I could, like I said, do my work on an iPad. Now, is a 9.7 inch screen ideal? No, it's really not. It's not ideal to use a 9.7 inch screen. Um, it's not ideal for the keyboard. The keyboard's kind of small as well. Not having a mouse, like I said, was impedance. Um, and having a traditional operating system uh, to be able to move files and things, but you still can do it with the File Explorer uh, as well, <clears throat> which is really neat as well because you can actually go in and you can set it up to where you can send files uh, through the iOS OS uh, or iPad OS. Um, so, been able to do work on it, it's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't look at anything like, you know, any, anything more hardcore than that. Uh, I actually have tried to use Adobe Premiere Rush on it. Uh, it takes forever. It's not real smooth. It's very hard for me to edit on. Um, I would say if I had an 11 inch or 12.9 inch uh, iPad Pro, that that would actually be a pretty good, pretty good way to go uh, with Adobe Rush is using it um, to do those sorts of things and use the pen and everything. However, you can, you can most definitely program on an iPad, a base model iPad from like 2018, not even a, a new base model, not the 10.2 the inch, but the 9.7 inch. Um, you can definitely program on it. Uh, like I said, with the SSH and stuff, you can SSH into your, you know, your Raspberry Pi and you can write Java code if you wanted to. You're probably just gonna write Python. Uh, let's be real, that's what you're gonna do. Uh, but you could write Python code on it. You could set your Raspberry Pi up to do Kali Linux and you could do some web penetration and things like that. Um, you could SSH into any server really that you had uh, and, and do any uh, sort of other IT task. There's also a lot of different apps for, for iOS to where you can you know, do network monitoring and things like that. And so I think it's really awesome. Uh, that you know, for three or four hundred dollars, you can have a reliable product like this. Now, of course, you have to buy the <clears throat> the pen and the keyboard and everything a little bit separate. However, for a couple hundred dollars, you can do quite a bit of IT work um, if really you're just trying to get into it. And that's what this video is for. You know, this video is for those people who don't have a whole lot of money but still want to learn something cool and new and use the hardware that they already have. And my guess is, is that most people, uh, for the most part, have either an iPad or an Android equivalent tablet. And so being able to program on either of these is, is really awesome. Um, it's, it's great to see that we've come that far in technology. And so if you like these sorts of videos, if you like it to where I just take random kind of cheap things, things that we, we most have, and look to see if we can do professional workloads on them. Um, if you enjoy that, if you enjoy career advice, if you enjoy uh, just other IT things, like we're, we're, we're still doing the Raspberry Pi stuff, we're still doing programming here, um, we're still looking at laptops and doing builds and things like that, if, and looking at you know 2012 Mac Minis and MacBook Airs, if you enjoy that sort of stuff, just go ahead and, and subscribe. Uh, click the bell notification. There's a lot of stuff that's gonna be happening on the channel here over the next uh, six to 12 months. Um, you know, even though we're all in this pandemic together, uh, it doesn't mean that we still can't be continually learning and bettering ourselves so that whenever we come out of it, we have new skills that we can use to better ourselves. And so I hope everyone's staying safe I hope you are practicing social distancing and I hope that this video has been helpful to you and I hope that you learned something. And so this is Jeff the IT guy and I'm checking out. Uh, and stay tuned, like I said, for more videos. We're gonna be looking at my Mac Mini content creation setup with a 2020 Mac Mini, doing a review of it. Um, 
We're going to be looking at some more Raspberry Pi projects. We're going to be looking at Kali Linux. Um, <clears throat> we might even look at a new iPad video or something like that. And so I've got a lot of things coming. I just got to have the time to do it. And so, like I said, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, keep coding.